Hey guys, welcome to Gingham and Grit, also part of Twisted Grapevines. I'm Kim Beckmeyer, and it's Friday night in August in Texas here. I'm going to go ahead, oh, just hit the glue gun, and I'm going to go ahead and make sure I'm sharing the right link with my other social media, so hang on just a second. I think I did it right. It's been a while since I've done YouTube live, so usually I'm uploading the YouTube, so I just wanted to make sure I was doing it right. Um, it has been a long, long, long week. So we just started back at school, and we just heard that um, from our school board this week that they've extended virtual learning for another two weeks, so we're going to the 21st of September, which is a good thing, but um, high school and virtual learning is... Um, it's a challenge. It's a challenge for everybody. It's a challenge for parents. It's a challenge for kids. It's a challenge for teachers. So um, we all just have to give a lot of grace. But I tell you, I'm wiped out today. Um, so what I have been promising to do, I did a YouTube video on the lollipops and the yarn balls using the chenille yarn. So we've done these. And then I started looking and I started seeing these other sweets and lollipops and candies out there, the fakes. And I've been really impressed by them all and haven't had a whole lot of time to get to delve. And because some of that stuff out there, I think is truly artwork. Some of the donut, I saw someone had made some fake donuts today and I've seen the Sundays and other things and just quite beautiful pieces. And um, I'm not anywhere near there yet. But I did watch probably about six or seven videos, and I've kind of adapted my own own way of doing these. So um, Laura with, um, I can't even think of her thing. Laura Jean had, she did a video, and she used, uh, actually I did this candy based on her method. She cut single strips, three-fourths, or I think hers were an inch. I did mine three-quarters of an inch. So I cut two colors, strips three quarter inch, and just rolled them, and you get this kind of, and then I did the ends, and I'll show you how to do the ends. And you get this kind, and I brushed it a little bit with some glitter. I don't think I decoupaged this one. I was just kind of playing with it, but I really like the tight swirl of the two colors. Now, mind you, one side of it's really pretty. The other side has a little bit, it's not quite so flat and, and perfect. And that's just because of how you cut. And that's okay. And this was my very first attempt. There's a little bit of glue on here. Plus it fell on the floor. So <laughs> I picked up a lot of the dirt off the floor, unfortunately. Sorry, that's kind of embarrassing. But um, so there's that right there like that. So there's the good side. There's the bad side. And I just put, with my pick, I just put this. And then I mounted this so it'll pop up in a loop. So that's what I did with that one. And then I was watching another one and I started looking at it and I was like, gosh, their, their things are a little bit thicker. And so I sat there and I started digging through some of my supplies from last year that I didn't use. And pardon me really quick. I came up with, um, so I found these candies that I had bought at Wreath Makers Live and this pack of six was $12.50. And I think now, after I figured out how to make these, I think this is for a really good price. Because, let me pop this up, but I'm going to show you. Unless this is craft foam that is striped, I think they made it this way. And I have to actually feel it. I haven't. Can't tell. I think it might be. Yeah, maybe it is that way. I can't tell. I can't tell if this was glued. Like they just cut half inch strips this way and glued them all together and then cut their strips the other way to get these stripes. But if they did all that work, then heck yeah, this is worth twelve fifty for six of them. Because, oh my gosh, that would be a ton of work. So I don't know if they did that. Now, if you look at this piece right here, there's a curled edge on this side, a rolled edge, and a rolled edge on this side. And so I was watching, I think it was Scott Waterman who did it, and they cut their piece, say like this, and they folded both ends 
to the middle. So I guess they cut this one wider. And they rolled this up. No, I think they did about one and a half. So they glued these down. I think he might have used double-sided tape. And I even bought some double-sided tape. But this stuff didn't want to stay down. Mine didn't. This was stronger. And maybe if I was using the glitter stuff, the glitter stuff is thinner. And maybe that might have worked. I'll have to try that. I just got the glitter. And I didn't realize it was thinner. But it's thinner. But so this was, they folded inside like this to create a, a, a folded edge here and a folded edge here. And then they would roll it up this way, which is what I think this one did. So you would have a rolled edge on both sides. So if you were putting it in, say, for instance, a centerpiece or something like that, where both sides were visible, I would understand the need for the double edge. However, if it's going on a wreath, I made an adaption. So I just took mine, and instead of folding both sides in, I just folded them in half. So I cut these one and a half inch wide, and then I just folded them half. And so I have a rough edge here and the folded edge here, which I really like this method. And so if you look at this side, I didn't treat this side. I actually use a cable mount tie to tie this onto a wreath. We put this in our witch's wreath. Um, you'll see this side is kind of a little uneven, a little rough. This is the non-rolled side. And then this side has the folded edge on it. And then I dusted it with um, the shiny, the gloss Mod Podge. And then I used the um, extra fine iridescent glitter on top of it. So be careful you don't OG, don't over glitter because I did that on one of them and it it doesn't change the color, but it alternated. It, it went as vibrant as I wanted it to be. It didn't pop like I thought. And also I'm thinking I want to make these a little bit bigger too. I want to make them, these were two by two squares. And I think I'm going to do three by two tonight. We'll, we'll play and see, because I like them. If you'll see right here, they're a little bit fatter. I like the fatter ones on those. So it's a learning process. It's me deconstructing and trying to figure out how to do all these. And like I said, I came up, this is my way of doing it. I just folded them in half. But this side will never be seen because it's going on a wreath. So my stuff is usually going on a wreath. And so therefore I can, you know, short change a little bit and make it go a little bit faster because as Lori Jacob says, time is money. And so we want to be careful and mindful of all that. So as I was saying, I cut these at an inch and a half wide. And so I bought these right here from Hobby Lobby. And I think they're, what are these? I think they're 18 by 12, maybe. Yeah, these are 12 by 18 pieces of foam. And you can get them in all sorts of colors. They're 99 cents. You can buy them in packs. Um, so just however you want to do it. And then originally I didn't buy the sparkle because I was thinking I was going to just single cut them. And I was like, well, if I'm rolling them this way, there's no sparkle on the edge. So why would these are extra 50 cents? Why would I spend the extra money if you're not going to see the sparkle? But if I'm folding them in half, like I did right here, you see the sparkle. So um, I went ahead and bought some the other day. The only thing is, is I wanted this green color and I haven't found the green in the sparkle yet. That's what I really wanted. So I wanted to do these three for this um, gingerbread thing we have. I wanted to do those three. And I still may do it and use this one and just, you know, do the decoupage, the Mod Podge on it. But, um, but there's a lot of pretty colors. Like, I thought this would be, this emerald, emerald's really big this year for Christmas. It was a really pretty emerald. But like, look at this red. This is just really pretty. So look at that red and green. Isn't that beautiful? You do a lot of fun candies with that. You can even pick a white with it, too. You could do a three. That's where um, my business partner, Reve, um, other part of Twisted Grapevines, she, I was going, okay, so do you want me to do, you know, green and orange, orange and purple, purple, green. She's like, yes. <laughs> I was like, okay, we'll do all three. So we did all three on this one. And I think it came out really, really cute. All right. So here's this guy right here. Okay. 
And so um, that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to pan down. I did just get um, a new thing uh, or a new cordless um, glue gun, a Ryobi for my birthday this week. And if any of you guys, I haven't even looked at my, my Facebook or anything all week. I kid you not, it has been so crazy at work this week with this virtual school stuff that I haven't even looked to see anything. But anyways, my sweet husband got me a cordless uh, Ryobi glue gun and he got me two battery packs for it, rechargeable battery packs. But he forgot to get the charger. So the charger's on his way. And so anyways, I'm still using this one. And every time I feel the, the cord on this, I go, oh, I'm getting ready to get me without a cord. I'm so excited. So anyways, I'm going to pan down and show you how I cut these and then how we build these. So here we go. So you can make all your own sweets for this holiday season. All right. So if you don't um, can't see or you need a better explanation, let me know. So, and I apologize. My work area is a hot mess. Um, so I'm going to put this, I'm going to just line up this in and this in here. And then see that in. It's not going to be perfect. I tried to get these perfect, and I was using a ruler and everything, and it just doesn't go perfect. Put my phone over here. All right, so I got this really nice metal ruler. I was wanting the quilter's ruler that was 18 inches, but I couldn't find one just yet, so I probably need to order one. I just didn't have time. So I'm going to measure up from my baseline one and a half inch. I'm going to put this side here. And I'm going to do it on this side here. All right. And then I'm going to use my rotary cutter. And I'm going to just glide it right along. And I'm pressing down. I tried cutting to it once. And I really need to replace my rotary um, blade. And so two just wasn't cutting it. I don't get it. The one cutting it. But so I need to do... I need to get new blades in here. I hate putting new blades in though, because I always cut myself when I put new ones in because it's so sharp and I've been dealing with a dull one for so long. All right, so I'm gonna go up another one and a half inch. So when I fold one and a half inches, it'll give me three quarter inches. All right, oops, and I'm gonna go all the way through. And of course it doesn't get as clean. Okay, so there we go. All right, so then what you once you get these cut one and a half inches, you want to take your edges right here, and we're going to use glue, or hot glue, and we're just going to run a thin bead. I love this kind of glue gun because it's got that really thin point right there, and then we're just going to match them up and just hold it for a second. The foam, um, it dries pretty quick, so you don't have a whole lot of time to play with it. Um, I kind of hold it there for just a little bit. And I've got pretty calloused fingers. And I just kind of pull the excess glue off. Right. Okay. And I've already glued these two together. So I'm going to do four pieces together. Because I made this one and just a smaller one. It was three colors. And I used four pieces all together. And I got two two candies out of it. So I had to reverse the colors on them because you'll use more, since the purple's the outer color, you'll use more of the purple. So I reverse it on the other one. Ooh, these matched up pretty good. Sometimes you glue them together and they don't match up so great. And you're like, whoa, what happened to that cut job? Okay, so I'm gonna glue and hold these here really quick. Let's see. And those of you who are joining in, if you have not subscribed, I would really appreciate if you could do that for me. That would be awesome. Let's see here. Okay. So I've got four strips right here. And once you get the strips on there, that one's the good. I'm going to start on the other end just because it's going to be a little bit there. All right. We're going to run glue. And like I said, you could fold them if you wanted the the folded edges on both sides, you could do it this way. You know, fold this side in and that side in. But um, that's kind of long. 
So I'm going to run glue right here toward my edge, and I'm just folding mine straight in half. You don't want to be right on the edge because then the glue is going to seep out. And it's okay if it seeps out because it's on the cut edge. It doesn't matter. But you might burn yourself, and that, that does matter. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of burning myself. Even though my fingers are pretty, I don't know. We all say we don't have fingerprints anymore, <laughs> crafters, because we, we get the glue guns kind of burning off. The hot glue does. Okay. Now, the craft foam is pretty darn forgiving. So if you mess up, you can usually pull it apart and fix it. So I'm just holding it down for a second. Just kind of smooth it over. And if it pops open, just put a little bit more glue right there. Yeah, I was going to wait till tomorrow afternoon and do this live. And I was like, well, I'm awake. <laughs> I've been wanting to do this. You know how sometimes you just have things that loom over your head. And it's like, if I don't get this done, I'm not going to rest. Like I said, I've been wanting to do this all week. And there just wasn't a time. And I'm not for sure. I think tomorrow night we're going live. I'm not for sure. It might be today's husband's birthday. I don't remember. If it is, I'll go live. Um, I've got a what I want to do. I've got a ton of stuff I need to do and want to do. But I've got a real pretty cheetah print. Um, I was it? Oh, can't even think. Sorry, brain just totally locked up there. Um, awareness, cancer, breast cancer awareness week that I'm leaving. So I had Cassie who paints a lot of signs for me. She painted, um, I gave her a picture off of the ribbon and I said, can you make a sign out of this? She's like, I'll try. Of course, because I wanted the colors reversed out. And so, of course, she did it splendidly. All right, so we're just going along this. Like I said, I did it some where I put the glue out kind of in the middle. And that didn't work out super great because it tends to pop open if you put it your glue too close to the middle. So you want it a little bit toward the edge, but not super close to the edge where it'll spit out. If that makes sense. Because that's, you know, an official crafting trim spinning out. All right. Yeah, we're all starting to get the hang. I teach high school math. And so we're all starting to get the hang of the virtual classroom. It'll be interesting. Monday nights are open house. And we have to do it virtually. So we were having to make you know, introduction videos, and we're going to be doing Zoom meetings for parents, and they get a Google Doc to sign in on, and I'm just like, oh my gosh, that's just crazy. All right, and part of my lights just dimmed, I just noticed, and I take in my other light source up to work, because I had to do my video for the parents. <laughs> but I tell you, what is exhausting is looking at like three computer screens and a phone and just constantly all day long, ding, 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 ding. They're just being bombarded with messages and, oh, goodness. And I know it's got to be just as crazy for the kids having to find where everything is. And we're all trying to do things real similar so the kids don't have to look in a million different places. But good gracious, it gets so confusing. I know they got to be confused. I know their parents are confused. It's just, it's just hard. And you just miss seeing your kids face to face. I can't learn their names real well because I can't see them. I mean, I see, you know, a tiny screen, but not very much of them. So it's hard to... It's hard to really remember, except, you know, like if they need tutoring and they hang out afterwards with you, and 
then you get to kind of talk a little bit. Because high school kids are so much fun to talk to. And they break down the walls and kind of show who they are. It's kind of fun. Okay, so I've got, I'm going to do one in the third. Oh, that dripped on the thing. That dripped glue down onto that. Ready to go. Sorry about that. So this part of my hand doesn't, is it polished yet? <laughs> All right, so I'm going to do two different ones. I'm going to do one in threes, and then I'm going to do one in the glitters. I haven't done the glitters before, so I'm going to do this way. Um. So I've got the purple folded, I've got the orange, and I've got the green. Now, when you start these, so you want to make sure all the folded edges are on the same thing. And I'm going to start with one first. And I'm going to put just a little bit of glue right here in the center like that. And I'm going to just tuck it over super tight. And I'm going to fold it. Lots of cinches there. Getting the very beginning super tight because you don't want to have gaps in it. Uh, that's probably, this is the hardest part is getting it tight. And it's really kind of tricky with the three. I didn't have so much problem with this one as I did with the other one like this. Okay, so I get that one in and now I'm going to come in and I'm going to butt the... I'm going to butt the orange right up next to that curved end right there. And if you want to put a little drop of glue to kind of help it hold it in place, make sure you just put it in the middle because you don't want it spitting out. I hope I didn't get too much right there. Yeah, I'm good. All right, so see how I kind of just put that right there? And I'm going to hold that and let it go down pretty tight. Okay, and then I'm going to take my green and I'm going to stack my green in here too. And I'm going to just pull it. See, yeah, I'm going to just move it down about, it looks like a quarter to an eighth inch right behind it. And so I'm going to put a little drop of glue right there to kind of give me a little bit of maneuverability. I'm going to hold it and see if you can see right there. So I'm going to hold it right there as well. Let's see if I can pull this down just a little bit more. See my hands. It's my nasty old work area. Sorry, guys. Okay, so let's see. All right. So I'm going to start rolling. Like I said, you want to keep it tight here at the beginning. You're going to keep it tight for the whole thing. Okay, I've got a little gap right there. So I'm going to go backwards a little bit. And I'm going to try and pick that a little bit tighter. Like I said, this is the hardest part right here. All right. So I'm going to actually put it down here on the table. So I can have my rough edges are up so the fold side is down. So it's all even down on that side because this is the back. Okay. So see what I have right there? Whoops, can you see? All right, so go tight. So it actually works better to sort on the bottom of the table. I mean, I'm turning it upside down. So I am just carrying this out here. And we're just spinning it around. And you're keeping it super tight. You're holding it down on your flat table. And like I said, you'll feel your uneven cuts back here. But it's being flat on the front. And like I said, I put mine on wreaths. Some people put these in plastic. So I don't think the back would show either if you're putting it. Sorry, there's more of those. If you're putting it in plastic, you know, like a plastic bag, a decorative type thing, and then tying it up, I don't think that would be bad either if you have the, the rough back. It just seems like it would take a lot of time to, to glue two sides down. Because you saw, how, I mean, that wasn't, 
it's super long to do that one color, but it could, it could start making a bit of time. Okay. So we're just spinning. La, 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 la. <laughs> Need some good music. Okay. okay, so that looks like a good size. I mean, you can make it bigger if you want to. I mean, just wherever you're putting, I mean, it, it's going to make a statement wherever you do it. So just kind of, you know, wherever you want to finish it, I'm going to go, I'm going to, I'm going to stop right here. So I'm going to, you're going to cut it in stages. So I'm going to cut the green one, the one closest on the inside first. And then I'm going to put a tiny drop of glue right there in the middle. Okay, and just kind of like we staggered it in the beginning, we're going to stagger it here as well. So, and if you keep this really tight, you don't need to put glue anywhere in the middle as you roll. All right, so I'm going to cut this by, it looks like, oh, let's say about a quarter of an inch longer than the green. And I'm going to put a tiny bit of drop of glue right there as well in the middle. And we're going to push down. Hold it for a second. And then I'm going to come with the purple, the final color. All right. And I'm going to make it just a little bit longer than the orange. Like I said, we're staggering all of these about a quarter of an inch. Oops, I didn't stagger that one very much. Probably should have done that one a little bit more. It should have been a little bit longer. Oh, well. We're going to put the candy tie right there anyway, so it's not going to matter. But I usually like to pull it a little bit longer, so that way it, it's not quite so brusque of an end right there. I like it to taper a little bit more, but that was me, sorry. A big old finger was in the way. All right, so that's what the three does. So that's what you get, it looks really pretty. All right, I'm gonna hold that just a little bit longer. I'm gonna kind of mash it here in the middle, make sure it's all flush to the front. Okay. So once you're here, you have a choice. You have a choice of whether you want to make a lollipop or whether you want to make a candy. So if you want to make a lollipop, I use um, I use my ice pick right here. And right here where this piece is, I would insert, you know, drill a hole right here. And then I would use... These guys right here, you can get these. Um, I found these at Walmart, bamboo skewers in the, um, oh, what is it? The kitchen utensil area. And right where you drilled that hole, I would take the pointy in and put a drop of glue on it and insert it in there. Okay. So that's how I would make a lollipop. Um, and then I bought... I think it was Cindy who taught me this trick. Let me grab this really quick. I found these on Amazon because I was making a, lo ah! a bunch of lollipops for one of our wreath kits. And I got tired of wrapping ribbon. And she's like, well, you know, you can buy straws. So I got this box, 200 straws from Amazon. And it's got eight colors in it. So, you know, you pick your color. And I just put a drop of glue at the top. And I just, and I put it up to where it meets. And then I cut the bottom. And then I just put glue right there. And look how cute that is. I mean, like, if you had that inserted right like that, that would be so cute. And you don't have to wrap shortcut. So, really like that trick. So been using that trick a whole lot. I like that one. 
Okay, so I'm gonna do the candies on this one. So I'm gonna use a piece of craft foam. And like I said, when I did this one right here and all the videos I watched, they made these two by two squares. But I like, a, I think I went this a little bit wider. So I think I'm gonna try a three by two tonight. And I'm gonna get pinking shears as well. So, you know, the ones that cut the, the zigzag. All right, and I'm gonna cut three of my four sides using those. So let's see here, we're gonna do, all right, I'm just using my scissors. So one, two, three. And then we wanna do two. I was like, what is that? And it's the tag. <laughs> I was like, that's a weird feeling. Okay. So on these right here, I'm going to go ahead and cut. I'm going to leave one edge long because that's going to be where we put it in. I'm going to go ahead and pink the others. So whatever color is on the outside, that's the color I make my little wrapper. All right. So we're going to fold this guy in half. So fold in half, and I'm going to put just a little drop of glue right there at the end. You don't want to carry your glue too far out because then it's going to be real long and skinny. And I like them short and fat. Like, see this one? I made it too long. I took my glue too far out. I like them where they're just short. Okay, and then I'm going to put a drop right here on the back, and then we're going to fold this piece down. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. Oops. Stay. We put a drop right there. We're going to fold this piece back. So you're going to fold it in half, and then fold it each side in half again, so it's really in fourths. All right. Ooh, I like that a lot better. Yeah, I like it wider. So you can either put your curl this way or you can put your curl that way. It just depends on which look you want. Um, I kind of like it with the ridges up. So I'm going to take this one. I'm going to put glue on this end right here. And where that was, you know, that sharp end right there, I'm going to put it right there. A little hot, <laughs> not too bad, but a little bit. I use um, multi temp, so I try to use the the cooler, not the super super hot glue. I accidentally I ran out of glue and I had pulled from an old bag and it was hot high temp glue, and this is a multi temp. And, you know, I just assumed it was still, oh, good gracious. It took forever. I had a burn right there. It took forever for that thing to heal. Yeah. That was not fun. Okay, so that's what we have right there. So let's do one more of these. So I'm going to, once again, I'm going to pink the one, one long edge and the two short edges. And if you want these, you know, shorter, you can always trim them. I've trimmed some before. So we're going to put a little bit of glue right there in the middle. And the fold. We need some more glue. That's the thing I got to get for my new glue gun, too. I got to get some glue because this is these use those little mini sticks. And my new one uses the big ones. So hopefully <laughs> I won't have to be replenishing glue quite so much. Always, Ray's always like, get okay, some more glue. Yeah. Oh, shoot. I stuck my finger right in that one. I've tried wearing those little finger fingertip guards, and it just doesn't work for me. I've got to feel it, which means you can feel all of it, unfortunately. All right. So I'm pinching this and holding it, or as Rhonda says, pinching it. Beautiful accent. Okay, and I'm going to put some glue right here. 
And then I'm going to go straight across on this one and hold it in place. Make sure that they're both going the same direction. Both of these have the crimped edges going up. Like I said, you could have made them go the other way. It's just personal choice. So there we go. There's our little our candy for tonight. That's using three. And like I said, if you're putting this on a wreath, so here's what the back looks like. So see, I don't think that would be bad if you packaged it in plastic, like look right here. So like say I had a clear plastic bag, say this was a lollipop or something, and you were to put it in the bag, you know, and tie it at the string. Like, I don't think that would show. Like here's this side with the, the thing. I don't think that would show. It's so much faster to do to do just the one fold and the two. So, I mean, it's just kind of, like I said, personal choice. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna do, and I'll tell you what too, if you, if your um, craft tabletop is as dirty as mine gets, it will pick up every piece of crud in your, your table. So um, the pick, the ice picks, really good for picking out <laughs> the stuff. So let's go ahead while this is here and let's go ahead and um, let's decoupage it or modpodge it, I guess you would say. So I don't like to use my super good brushes with Mod Podge because Mod Podge is like a glue. So in case I forget to go wash it right away or if it gets crusty, you know, these little cheap ones. You can get these at the Dollar Tree now, which is really nice. All right. Okay, so I'm just going to like, well, there you go. We might need to put a little glue on this one to hold this guy on there. I haven't had that happen before, but you know, it's alive, so it's going to happen, right? <laughs> it seems to. Thank you. All right, so we're just going to, I'm going to actually do my sides so I'm going to go here on my sides. And, you know, get ready because you're going to get it on you too. So it just, and I try to go in here. And if I have any of the, the crevices or whatnot, I try to fill them up. It just adds a little bit reinforcement so it doesn't come undone. And go in here and do this as well. Like I said, can you really over glitter? I don't know. And you can glitter the back you want to if it's going to show on both sides. This is only going to show on the front. So I'm going to probably not do the back just because I don't want to have to put this glue on the back. Except we require you doing two different things. All right, so we're just going to cover this in Mod Podge. Like I said, I got the shiny, and I didn't even know they made shiny. I think it was Lara who mentioned the shiny, Lara Jean. And I was like, oh, didn't even know they made shiny. We're just used to the Mod Podge from the 70s, where we would cut up calico strips and put them on plaster. Do y'all remember some of those who are old? I'm old, um, old as me. And we used to, oh, that was a craft we used to do with our moms all the time. And it was, um, you cut old calico scraps. And I remember we had this dog. And uh, you cut them up and you use pinking shears to cut them. And then you would decoupage them on there or modge podge. I think I got one of those in a white elephant gift one year for Christmas when I was older, when Sam and my husband and I went to a white elephant Christmas party. 
And here I am now, you know, playing with decoupage or Mod Podge. I always call it decoupage. It's hard to call it Mod Podge. All right, so I'm going to put this aside. So I kind of did it lightly. I didn't do it real, you know, real thick. I don't want glitter snowballs. Okay, so I'm going to take this and I'm going to just dust it. Like I said, I have this real fine, um, it's real fine glitter dust. I have this iridescent dust in the fine. I have it in the not fine. The not fine ones I use on, what do I, I use on the chenille lollipops. Get the edges here. You know, just put on something that you can collect the glitter because I do reuse what falls off. All good crafters reuse. Let's see there. Okay. So here we go. Stuck my big fat finger right there. So we can put some more on there. So it looks really light right now, but when you um, when it dries, this is going to dry. The Mod Podge dries clear, and the sparkle shows. So I'll show you that right. Now. So that's what we have so far. Okay. So this is what it looks like when it dries. So it goes from this to. So the colors become really vibrant when it dries. I really like that about the, and that's that's because of the shiny. That and the iridescent makes it pop a little bit too. Okay. I feel like I'm in class and I need to say, all right, are there any questions? That's what I've been doing all week. Okay, does anyone have any questions before I move on? <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and collect some of my glitter right here. I wanna do one more with the already glittered material because I haven't used that yet. So that'll be, this will be made in voyage with that stuff. Okay. So let's see here. And I was going to tell you too, with these leftover pieces right here, I think the green one fell down over here. This one, so now the green is the longest. You can repeat the procedure, putting the green on the outside, going this way, and you'll finish with the green on the outside, and you can get a whole other lolly, I mean, candy out of this one. So. Oh, hi, Angie. Oh, thank you so much. I have made, and I actually did a tutorial with the yarn as well. So like I did the balls and like here, the lollipops. So I did those too. And um, I, I was watching something and I was like, okay, those are different. And I was looking at them really close. And so I go, what are those made out of? And I sat there and I looked and I go, I think they're made out of foam. And so I um, I ended up watching like six or seven videos and I kind of came up with my own little method of how to do this. So th this one right here was done on a single cut. So this is three quarter inches, cut three quarter inches, two colors and just rolled tight. This was cut on an inch and a half, but it's folded. So this inch or this edge right here is... Um, a folded edge and then the back side is a cut edge so because I use all of mine in wreaths I just use a cable mount on the back and do it like that if you want a lollipop you know of course don't put these ends on and you know put the, the stem right there but I use the shiny Mod Podge to give it that that really bright it really makes it pop and then use the iridescent fine glitter so that's what I do on those. Now, this one right here, I didn't make this one. I actually bought this one. This one, the fold is on front and back. So you could use this on something that you were going to see, you know, 360 all the way around, like a centerpiece or something. And so on that one, I watched someone do a video, and I'm looking for a strip of, I folded all mine. But what they did on theirs was you would fold it in on this side, and then you would fold it, you know, in on this side. And then you would roll it that way. So that's kind of what that one, how that one was done right there. They folded like that, which to me is a lot of folding. 
and a lot of glue and a lot of potential to burn myself. Um, I saw one where they, they put double-sided tape in the middle and then they folded it there, but I couldn't get this stuff to hold. It was, I tried, but I went having a lot of success with it. So anyways, I, I just like the single fold because the rough side, I won't, it won't show on what I use it for. And then, you know, and I do, I did three colors and I'm getting ready to do one with two. So this I haven't used before. This is new. So I cut, I think three strips on this one, the long strips. And this already had the glitter on it. I really wanted to do these three colors for something, a project I'm working on, but this one I haven't found yet in the glitter. So I've got to check one more spot that may have it. So I'm going to just do these two tonight. So let's see if we can get these going. All right. So when you start these, you want to stagger them. So you want one a little bit longer than the other. All right. And then you're going to start rolling. And you want it super duperly tight. So I'm going to put it down here on my table because I may have not kept them super great. So I want the part that's facing down on the table to be all the same length. So if there's any parts, look at my glue from my fingers is coming off. So if any parts are uneven, they'll show up on the back, not on the front. We've got a new kit coming out soon. We just got the gingerbread we have painted for us. And it's in pink, red, white, and uh, the green. And so that's why I was wanting to put the different colors. I was thinking of putting the red with this too, but I don't like the red with the white and the pink. Maybe the, ooh, I bet the red and the pink. Would, <gasps> yeah, okay, that's what I'm gonna do next. So this one, I don't think I'm going to make a candy on this one. I think I'm going to make a lollipop on this one. I don't know. I'm going to do a candy again. So when you curl it, you just want to make sure it's super tight as you curl it. And um, so you don't have holes in there. And like I said, we're keeping it. And I can see, I see my little bumps all back here. Okay. So I think I only cut two strips of, or three, I think I cut three strips of the white. I don't know why I didn't cut four. Probably I got distracted because that's where my head is today. After a long week at work. Okay. All right. So that's how far we got. Like I said, it picks up a lot of stuff off your table. So I'm going to flip it over. <gasps> Ooh, that looks cool. I like that. Look how pretty that looks. Right there. That came out cute. And it's already glittered, so I don't have to glitter it. Okay, so I'm going to, my white one ended right here. So I'm going to cut this about half an inch longer. I may not need it a full half inch. It may go more like three eighths. And I'm going to put a little drop in the middle of glue. You don't want to put too much because you don't want it to seep out the sides like that right there might. Okay. And then we're just going to hold it down. So Angie, when you made your yarn um, lollipops, did you use the big yarn or did you use just the regular yarns? Or did you use that big chunky yarn? I've done them both. Where's one right here? I did, um, like I did this one for Halloween. These are in the little, the little yarns. I like the big, and like here's a ball in the little yarns. Oop, I got, there's that double sided tape, so I did those. And then I love mixing the, the jute with it. That I really like doing. So I've got a real retro Halloween wreath that has a lot of the muted colors that I was going to put ah, these two guys in that I like. But I really do love the chunky. The chunky's just just so bold. Okay. Blue. Look, I have blue from that. I think that's the Mod Podge. All right. So there's that guy right there. So I'm going to take this, my 
and I'm going to just go in right there. So I'm just jabbing it in. And then I'm going to take one of my um, bamboo skewers from Walmart, the kitchen section, and I'm going to put hot glue on it, and I'm going to just kind of twist it in there. We're going to let that dry. And then I was telling them that I bought at um, Sam's Club this box of 200, and it has eight colors in it. Let's see if my paint smooth. <gasps> Look, they match. Okay, so so then I'm gonna take this guy right here. I'm gonna put a drop. Well, let me put it on here first. All right, and I'm gonna put a little bit of glue here at the top of it, and then smash it. All these great verbs to like smash. Jab. <laughs> Sounds so violent. And then I put a drop of glue down here too. If I need this to um, mount in a wreath, I keep it on there. But more than likely, I'm cutting it off. But it's there. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and put a bit of glue right in there to fill that up. Keep it there. And if you wanted to, you could put a real pretty bow right there as well, where the straw meets the, the edge. Isn't that so cute? Oh my gosh, and I got the cutest ribbon. Where did I get that from? I think I got it Trendy Tree, but it's white with crimped um, pink. It's cut with the pink and shears. Oh, it's so super sweet. But is it white? It might be cream. It may not work. It may be cream. You may just have to get a pink ribbon. Oh, darn. I've got to go look for ribbon. <laughs> you know, I hate that. <laughs> so anyway, so there's that one. So this is done with the fold. Both of these were done with the fold that I made tonight. And um, that's just something I kind of created from watching all the videos I watched. But you can make them also, like I said, in the singular. These are pretty too. But you could do them with the candy. I like it with the wider. So I do, I do like, we did these three by two. So I like the wider cut. And then this is with the, the lollipop. All right. So that's what I got for you guys tonight. I'm going to do another one tomorrow. So let me lift that real quick. So, um. Yikes. So there we go. I guess I can squat. Yeah. All right. So tomorrow I'm going to do one during the day. I've had a lot of people ask how I make my um, pumpkins. So I'm going to do a tutorial. I have, I did a pumpkin in, in, I love mustard. So, and this has kind of, it's almost like a sear supper because it's got the puckers on it. So I'll make one of these. I've got an order for some cheetah, so I will make a, a cheetah one. I'll make a couple different sizes and use some different types of fabric so you can see how they work. And then I use real dried pumpkin stems that I got on eBay. So I will do that tutorial tomorrow. And I think tomorrow night we are doing a breast cancer awareness read. So that one, that one I think is on our Facebook Live. But I'm going to do another YouTube with the pumpkins. So, anyways, lots of fun of the. I've been having a lot of fun making all these um, attachments for wreaths. So I think they're just so fun. <laughs> and plus, it, you can do them really quick, and it's like you've got something you've accomplished. Whereas a wreath sometimes takes a while to do. So it's kind of fun to have something all finished. So, anyways. Oh, you use chunky yarn too. Yeah, I love the chunky yarn. I think it's really cute and it's hard to find right now. So I ran out of um, white the other day and oh my gosh, I had to go to so many stores to find white. It's just, nobody had white, everybody's using it. So um, I really like the chunky yarn. I think it's, plus it goes so fast. Because when you do the little yarn, oh my goodness, it takes a long time. But the, the big one, so you're done. You have to make that sound too. <laughs> um, 
So I hope you can come join us tomorrow. And like I said, well, I'll do it on YouTube, The Pumpkins. And then tomorrow night we'll be doing Breast Cancer Awareness. So hope to see you then. Y'all have a great Friday night. Rest after your long week. I know I'm going to. And it was 107 degrees in Texas today. In the, in the Metroplex, Dallas, Fort Worth. It was so hot. So I'm escaping to the roof room and just, oh, it takes it out of you. So hope y'all have a great weekend and pop by and say hi and I'll see you later. All right. Good night.